Hey everyone. So yeah, I know you probably recognize me from my famous role in Blade Runner where I played Rick Deckard, the Blade Runner who retired replicants who just might have been a replicant himself. Or maybe you remember me from my famous role in The Shining. Hi Lloyd. Yeah, that is terrifying. Anyhow, today we're gonna dive into the best face swapper I have seen yet. And the best part about it is that it is totally free. It runs on your own machine, installs with like one click and does a whole host of other things. Okay, let's dive in. So I know that most of the face swaps we see are like Elon memes or like Zuckerberg as a robot, but I think that the technology does have some legitimate creative uses, and we're gonna take a look at those in just a minute. But first, let me introduce you to Face Fusion. Now, I know some of you see GitHub here and you're like, I'm out, but hang on a second, because this is really, really super simple, and it works if you're on a PC or a Mac. If you're like on a Chromebook, I don't know what to tell you. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is download Pinocchio. Now, Pinocchio is fairly new, but it's basically a browser that allows you to run AI applications all locally on your machine. Plus side here is that you don't need to mess around with like Git clones or Conda installs or anything really actually technical at all. So I will reiterate, it is very new. At the time that I'm making this video, it's on version 0.8. So this is very early in, but it is working. Everything more or less seems to be running on the Windows side, and I did get it working on my M1 MacBook Pro running Sonoma. So again, download links are below. On the Windows side, you do have to authorize it. On the Mac side, you install it, and then you do have to run a self-executing patch command. Just click on it and it's done. Once you have Pinocchio installed, just head over to Face Fusion download it and you're off. There's also a ton of other stuff in Pinocchio. We'll be talking about that later on. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. That is the first time I have ever said that on the channel. I feel a little dirty about it. So once you have Face Fusion downloaded, uh, what you wanna do is head over into launch normal mode. Click on that and you'll basically get a command line like this. Now this might take a hot minute before you get started. So just be patient with it. But after a few moments, a browser window should open up and you now have Face Fusion running locally on your machine. So the interface is simple enough. There are a few little things that you're gonna wanna know as we move along. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is use a photo of yourself. So I have a shot here that I clipped from Blade Runner. I think this is from the final cut. Um, has there been a movie that has had more cuts than Blade Runner? So taking that file and just dragging it into the target area, it begins to analyze. Now, one thing that you'll definitely wanna do if you're on an M1 or M2 Mac, or if you've got a PC with a beefy GPU, is definitely have this core ML. I think it'll be CUDA if you're on the PC side. Make sure that that's clicked on. That will speed up everything a tremendous amount. Now, if you click over on the preview frames, uh, my first frame was black, so it didn't have anything. Um, we can see now we've got some preview frames going. It's looking for the reference of what the face is that I'm targeting here. So once it has that, so it has Deckard's face, and now it actually has my face there. From there, simply head down and hit the start button and off it goes. So there are a handful of other modules up here, such as frame enhancer, face enhancer. We're gonna talk about those in just a minute. Uh, you also have the face swapper models, which is in swapper 128 and in swapper 128 FP16. In swapper is actually insight face swapper, which we have covered way back on the channel. It's kind of the most popular of the face swapping softwares. Now, personally, I'm finding that if you start playing around with the execution thread count or in particular max memory, uh, I tend to end up with a lot of errors. So you might just wanna leave those alone for the time being. Once your render is done, you can preview it by hitting the little play button here and download it via the little download icon right there. What you don't wanna do is hit start again, which I constantly do. I don't know why, it's like Pavlovian that hit the big red button to download. It does not turn into a download button. If you hit the start button, it just, well, it errors on you or it will just start all over again. So yeah, just make sure that you hit that download button how many times I've done that. Now we're gonna take a look at some more examples and some best practices on all of this, but I do wanna point out this is only one way that you can go about it. You don't have to do like famous movies or anything like that. For example, yesterday while testing this out, uh, I recorded this as a quick test. Test, test, this is a test, test. Here's a test. I know it's weird, right? I'm not wearing a black t-shirt. So anyhow, uh, I went over to Mid Journey after that and generated up this dude who's like cosplaying as, I don't know, Super Chad. Um, I do like the fact that he actually has like an Abercrombie belt on his superhero outfit. 
Well played, Chad. And running insight face swap got us this. Test, test. This is a test. Test. Here's a test. So we'll circle back to Bizarro Me in just a second, but first I wanted to take you through some fairly impressive results with Face Fusion. Uh, for example, this is a scene of Tom Hardy in Inception. I mean, it looks relatively decent, although I will say that standard kind of face swapping rules still apply. For example, if I try to take my face and put it on Leonardo DiCaprio, we get this, which isn't horrible, uh, but at the same time, it just looks a little bit off. I think Leo obviously has a much wider face than I have. I, you know, looking at it more and more, actually, I don't think it looks completely horrible. It looked, I don't know, it's my own face, so it just looks odd and weird to me to begin with. Now that said, I never look right on Daniel Craig, so taking this shot from Casino Royale, yeah, clearly that looks completely off. I mean, the physique, I mean, that's all correct, but you know, the face looks a little bit weird. It is really funny, my face looks so squished on there, and then like the ears are gigantic. It's a weird looking dude. But taking Robert Downey Jr., who I tend to face swap fairly well onto, uh, this is a shot from Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which if you have not seen, I highly recommend that movie is great. Uh, we end up here, which looks pretty good. You can see that there is a fair amount of compression and it looks a little on the crunchy side. Um, that can be solved with the face enhancer tab here. Now, I will say that when you have that turned on, your render times will get dramatically longer but the results may or may not be that great. I really wanted to put Face Fusion through its paces, so I gave it this scene from Blade Runner. So this I would consider to be a super challenging shot. There's a lot of things going on here. The rain in the background, you've got some smoke or steam basically in front of Deckard's face. Uh, just lots of stuff that could potentially trip it up. Um, so running it through Phase Fusion with the enhance mode on yielded this, which I actually I kind of expected. Um, yeah, it sort of has that warpy look. I mean, there's a lot to deal with in this shot. Um, if we scrub through too, you can see at certain points like the chopsticks just kind of vanish um, up my nose, I guess. It's a little weird. But that said, at the lower quality, it actually holds together pretty well. So with having enhance off, yeah, it actually looks a little bit better. So maybe taking this output and then running it through something like Topaz if you needed a higher resolution might be the solution for you. As another experiment, I thought it would be interesting to take someone's face and face swap it onto their own face. In this case, I took a photo of Harrison Ford as Han Solo and face swapped it onto Old Solo. And yeah, that is not bad. It looks at least as good as the face swapping in Dial of Destiny. I will say for the dialogue, there is, I don't wanna call it like face paralysis, but like the mouth movement is a little bit on the mush mouth side. Then again, Harrison Ford is a pretty grumbly actor. But I did run into the same thing with my Blade Runner shot as well. You can kind of see my like my mouth sort of barely moves. So just to see if maybe projecting and going a little bit bigger in a performance would have an effect. Uh, I headed back to the Overlook Hotel uh, and this came out, which is really pretty impressive. I mean, that's that's really good. Terrifying again, but good. Oh, hey, you guys stuck around to the end of the video like I asked. All right, cool. There are a lot of other AI tools within Pinocchio that are being added. Uh, for example, Illusion Diffusion that does all of the crazy swirl stuff, uh, Bark and Stable Diffusion, um, Animate Diff as well. Now, here's the thing. As I said earlier, this is all very new and not all of the tools are 100% working. One thing that I would definitely recommend after installing Pinocchio is to definitely join the Discord just in case anything sort of funky or weird happens. It's also a good way of keeping track of when updates come out. As these tools become more stable, I will begin doing tutorials on them as well. So if you see any in here that you would like me to take a look at, please do let me know in the comments. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.